to be able to graph linear equations which are straight lines. All right, remember the Cartesian coordinate system was named after Rene Descartes, and he used two real number lines. The horizontal axis is the x axis, the vertical axis is the y axis. They meet at a right angle at a point called the origin, and that's where both x and y is zero. The Cartesian coordinate axis is divided into four regions. They're called quadrants. And each one is on the next slide showed is gives you counterclockwise. And remember, every point is called an ordered pair. Alphabetically, the X comes first, so it's X and then Y. All right, so here we have the Cartesian coordinate axis. The upper right quadrant is the first quadrant. The upper left is the second. Lower left is the third. Lower right is the fourth. In the first quadrant, you notice both the X and the Y coordinates are positive. Conversely, in the third quadrant, both the X and the Y are negative. And the second and the fourth have opposite signs. In the second quadrant, the X coordinate is negative, Y is positive. In the fourth, the X is positive and the Y is negative. Remember, when you're graphing, always start with the X and then go to the Y. So we go over 3 and then 1 to plot the point 3, 1. We go over to the left one space on the X axis, down 1 on the Y to plot the point, negative 1, negative 1. Remember, we're constructing the Cartesian coordinate axis. Again, the vertical is the Y axis, the horizontal is the X. The origin is the ordered pair 0, 0. All right, and every point on the plane is identified by AB or X comma Y. So let's just plot some points. 2, 1 means we go across 2 on the X axis in the positive direction. We go up 1 in the Y where they meet is the ordered pair 2, 1. Negative 1, 3 means we go on the axis, X axis 1 to the left. We go up 3, and there's our ordered pair for the y direction. Negative 2, negative 1, we go from the origin two spaces to the left, negative 2 on the x-axis. Go down one space on the y, and we also have a point which is on the y-axis that's called a y-intercept, where we have x is 0, so we start at the origin. We go down three spaces on the y-axis, and now we have the y-intercept, 0, negative 3. All right, the collection of the points that satisfy the conditions of an equation when we draw a line is called the graph of that particular equation. All right, now a linear equation is in two variables, and the standard form is ax plus by equals c, where a and b are the numerical coefficients of the variables and the C is the constant. All right, let's review the three ways of graphing a linear equation. We can have three points or three ordered pairs. In reality, all we need are two to make a line, but the third is the checking point to make sure that the two points actually are true and we did not make an arithmetic error. The x-intercept means we want to point both on the x-axis and the y-axis. And since on the x-axis, the y-coordinate always 0, we set y equal to 0 and then solve for x. On the y-axis, the x-coordinate is always 0, so we set the x equal to 0 and we solve for y. Lastly, when you're using your calculator or graphing on Excel, you want to put the line ax plus by equal to c. In the slope y-intercept format, y equals mx plus b, m being the slope, and b is the y-coordinate of the y-intercept. All right, we're going to sketch the graph y equals 2x minus 1 using three ordered pairs minimum, and here I got you more than that. I'm going from x equals a negative 2 to x equals 2, and we want to find the corresponding y value. So when x is equal to negative 2, we have 2 times a negative 2, which is a negative 4, minus 1 equals a negative 5, giving us the ordered pair 2, negative 5. When x equals negative 1, we have 2 times a negative 1, which is a negative 2, minus 1, which is a negative 3, giving us the ordered pair negative 1, negative 3. When x equals 0, we have 2 times 0, which is 0. 0 minus 1 is a negative 1, 
giving us the y-intercept 0, negative 1. When x is 1, we have 2 times 1, which is 2. 2 minus 1 is 1, giving us the order pair 1, 1. And lastly, when x is 2, we have 2 times 2, which is 4. 4 minus 1 is 3, giving us the ordered pair 2, 3. All right, let's say we want to graph the line 4x minus 3y equals 24. And I'm substituting points for x and solving for y. I want to make sure that I get an odd number that is divisible by 3. So I'm taking numbers that are multiples of 3 for the 4. And since I can use 0 because 24 is a multiple of 3 initially, I use a negative 3, a 0, a 3, a 6, and a 9 for the x. So when x is equal to negative 3, we get a negative 12. Add the negative 12 to the 24, you get 36. 36 divided by a negative 3 is a negative 12. When x equals 0, we're left with a negative 3y equals 24, so y equals a negative 8. When x equals 3, we get a positive 12. Subtracting 12 from 24, we get a negative 3y is equal to 12. Therefore, y equals a negative 4. We have now the x-intercept. When, when x is 6, we get 24, and y is 0. And lastly, when x is 9, we get 36. Subtract 36 from 24, we get a negative 12 divided by a negative 3, and that is going to give us a positive 4, and we plot those points on the graph, and there is the graphic representation of 4x minus 3y equals 24. All right, using the x and the y intercept method, we are looking at the graph 2x plus 6, minus 6y equals 12. Since 12 is a multiple of 2 and 6, it makes this method very easy to deal with. You're not getting fractions. So when we look for the y-intercept, since you're on the y-axis, on the y-axis, x is 0. We're left with a negative 6y equals 12. 12 divided by a negative 6 is a negative 2. So there is our y-intercept. For the x-intercept, we know that x is y is equal to 0. Therefore, when y is equal to 0, we're left with 2x equals 12. 12 divided by 2 is 6, and we plot that point. And the ordered pair 3, negative 1, is also on that line. That's our checking point. All right, let's say we want to graph 2x minus 6y equals 12 on a graphing calculator or on an Excel spreadsheet. First, we want to solve for y because we want it in the form of y equals mx plus b. So we subtract 2x from both sides. We get negative 6y equals a negative 2x plus 12. Divide each term by a negative 6. So we get y is equal to 1 third x minus 2. The slope is 1 third. The y-intercept is a negative 2. You can plot that on your graphing calculator. You can set up a system, a set of points for x and solve for y on an Excel spreadsheet, and we have a video for that as well. All right, let's do the last one. We want to use the intercept method for y equals 2x minus 1. For the x-intercept, since y is equal to 0, we get that 2x is equal to 1. Therefore, x equals 1 half. For the y-intercept, we let x equal 0, therefore x is equal to a negative 1. We have the ordered pair 0, negative 1. We plot those two points, and we have our graph of that particular line. Here, I did this more freehand, so excuse the terrible line. 28 is a multiple of 14 and 7. For the y-intercept, again, for the x-intercept, excuse me, you let y equal to 0. That leaves us with 14x equals 28. 28 divided by 14 is 2, giving us the x-intercept to 0. For the y-intercept, we let x equal to 0, leaving us with 7y equals 28. 28 divided by 7 is 4, giving us the ordered pair 0, 4. You graph the line, and we now have the graphic representation of 14x plus 7y. Now let's take a look at a special case. We want to look at the vertical lines, and that tells us when x is equal to a constant. 
The y can be anything we want it to be, but the x is always equal to that constant number. For the horizontal line, it only goes through the y-axis, therefore y is equal to a constant. The x can be anything we want it to be, but the y is fixed, such as where x equals negative 7 or y is equal to 4. So x equals negative 7 we see is our vertical line. x is always 7. y can be anything we want it to be. When y is equal to 4, y is always 4. x can be anything we want it to be. So remember, for a graph of x equals a, x is equal to 2, we have our vertical line, or x is equal to negative 3. The same thing is true for the horizontal line.